Good afternoon, NorCal Carters. This is Jason here with another quick video. And this one is on chain breakers. And there's a couple different styles out there. Uh, this one has basically two bolts. One is a push pin bolt right there. And the other one pushes the pin back through the chain. So again, this is a quick chain breaker video. Uh, there's also the style that uh, looks more like a plier and it has a push pin going through it and how those work is there's little claws that go around the link and they hold it like this and you push the pin but they all basically do about the same thing is pushing the pin through the chain now if you're using an o-ring chain you're going to need a different style chain breaker they have specific chain breakers for the o-ring chains uh, or X-ring chains and the reason for that is the spacing. Uh, you want to make sure that you don't break the chain and put it back together and pinch all the O-rings because then you have one excessive drag, you blow the O-rings out and kind of defeats the purpose of your expensive chain. So in this example we have a 428 chain and a 428 chain breaker and again there's other variations out there that actually have three push bolts um, or that's at least what I call them and uh, what you'll notice on some of the models this one has a long pin and the long pin should go all the way through the link so you want to break the link pushing the pin through and I found over the years I do it a little bit differently um, this is one specific brand the other brand that has the three pins they actually have one with the long pin and one with the short pin and you use the short pin to break and actually with that model what I found when I'm breaking a chain so when you're doing the chain you want to mark which link after you've set the chain on your cart and you measure it out you want to make sure the engine is tight you want to make sure the sprocket is in the right location you want to make sure everything is correct as if the chain was there then you're going to roll the chain on the engine to measure the link and with this 428 there's actually a master link that's going to go on this end and so when you're done you're going to have to have let's call it a male end so basically two of them so that way the master link can connect the two. On other chains, what you're going to do, like a 219 or a 35 chain, you're not going to use a master link. You're going to break the chain, remove the links required to make it the right length. Then you're going to put the chain back together. So I'm going to try to do this as quick as I can, just so you guys aren't wasting a bunch of time watching. Um, so what you want to do is use the long push pin now this is designed, again, to push the pin all the way through. Now what I do is you want to make sure you're breaking the links that you're not using. So that way if you have to repress them together, you don't accidentally pinch them or damage them and cause another weak link. And so that little push pin, you want to make sure everything's nice and centered. I hope you can see it there in the video. You want to make sure the pin on the chain breaker is actually centered on the chain center pin you don't want to you don't want the push pin on the bar or the outer plate or the outer link otherwise you're going to just pinch the chain and then cause a weak spot and the 428s they have a little bit of a press fit and what I like to do is I don't go all the way so you tighten the bolt which pushes the pin you see the pin pushing out the backside right there see it pushing out through what I like to do is I like to just break the pin past the outer plate and then I move the chain one link over so you see there that's the put that's the pin I'm pushing out on the same link on the outer plate I'm gonna go to the next pin and let's see here again make sure it sits nice and flush there we go and same deal just push it through so in this situation it's about 
three to four millimeters, but I only break the chain enough to where it clears that outer plate. And the reason for that is, I'll show you, I have found the chain comes apart a lot easier when you're pushing the actual plate off. So you see how the plate is missing? It's right here. So I just push the pin right through that outer plate only and I remove the whole outer plate. It's one additional step. But what I've found over the years, if you try to push the pin all the way through the chain, what end up what ends up happening is you inadvertently start bending the outer plates and it causes a bind in the chain. And uh, so I, again, we're trying to minimize that. So then you pull off the links and there you go. We made this one shorter. Now you're going to go to your cart, check the length again before you put it together. Don't assume you did it right the first time. Always double check because again, you don't want to break and re-break chains and create multiple breaks and bad links. And so what we're going to do here, we're going to put this one back together. I'm not going to show you the master link. That'll be a separate video. And now you're going to use this push bolt. And you'll notice how it's cut out in the top of the chain breaker. So that is designed for these pins to drop in the top there so you have the proper clearance. Now doing it this way it gets a little bit tricky on trying to line the, mat the plates up and it might there we go so on this one what we'll have to do is I have to keep one pin up above the chain breaker and then as you tighten everything up you want to make sure that push bolt is centered on the pin I hope you can see that in the video there now you're gonna do the same thing on the back side and depending on how far you push this pin out it should be pretty close and you want to use a good quality chain break because what will happen is if there's a big gap between the chain and the outer support here or the gaps are a little bit off you always want to double check that because you don't want the tool actually pinching we don't want any pinching on the chain break or the chain itself what we want is press so this is basically just a, a simple press and what we're going to do is you're going to slowly start and it shouldn't take a lot of force so slowly start and we got that one started okay slowly tighten it up so you can see the pin is started through now to make sure we're the plates are aligned again I don't want to break this multiple times we're going to take this one we're going to move it down and again we're going to have to take the link and probably put on top of the chain break because most chain breakers aren't designed to do them the way I'm showing you. So you see the link is on top for clearance. This push pin bolt is centered on the pin. Now you'll see here that is not centered. See that? So what we're going to do is back off the pinch bolt And sometimes what you'll have to do is grab a screwdriver and twist it a little bit more. Because again, you want to make sure these pins are lined up. And that's one of the problems doing it the way I'm showing you. But I found over the years, you run into a lot less problems with pinching the chain. Bear with me for one second. This would be a perfect time to make a hammer sound. Bang, 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 as we're talking about, oh, don't hurt the chain. The chain is so fragile. And then using a hammer. So what, I, what I'm grabbing here is just a, a small pair of pliers just to give me enough leverage. I'm using a pair of pliers just enough to give me a little bit of leverage to slowly rotate the pin back in alignment. That's it. So again, it's a chain. You want everything nice and fluid. See how loose that is? You don't want to force stuff. You have, if you have to force it, something is wrong. So we were on the longer of the two. We're going to go back there.
And again, I'm not hitting it with a hammer. I didn't use a big pair of pliers, I just used a small pair, just enough to help me gain a little mechanical leverage to rotate the plate into alignment. And I just, I just like to go back and forth a little bit. And go in the opposite nice and good. See how it's pressing through nicely. And then what you want to do is keep tightening. And then what I do here is now I rotate to the other one. So now both of them fit laying down properly because now there's enough clearance. Now it's not fully engaged yet and I'll show you why and how I know that. So this pin, you see how it's coming out of the back there? It's flush, it's starting to come through. Now what you don't want to do is over tighten these push bolts because what will happen is you'll end up taking the two plates that are supposed to run parallel and you'll pinch them and they'll pinch the inner link and then you'll have a drag and a weak link. We don't want a weak link. We don't want too much drag because then you create heat and that's where the chains will break. So just go back and forth like that, lightly snug it, just enough to where the pin is actually pushed out through the back side of the plate. And then we're gonna go to the next one because we did two of them, remember? There we go. So don't always assume that when you bottom the push bolt out on the outer link, then everything's fine. That's not always the case because different chain variances, just because it's a 428 chain, that just tells you what the spacing is on the gear and the size. But there's chains that could be wider or narrower, all 428. The pins could be a little bit longer. Uh, typically for the go-kart stuff, Quite honestly, our chains are a little bit bigger because we need the extra heavy-duty strength uh, for the shifter cart application. So there you go. Just go back and forth. And then hopefully when I get done with this, being I never do test videos, um, I always just cut them and send them to YouTube. So nice and free. See that? Nice and free. Now you're ready to install your new length chain on your cart. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider a donation to NorCal Carters and you can find our PayPal link below. Have a great weekend.